Welcome everyone to the top 10 best Warframes of 2024. Now before we begin, let's first define what best Warframe even means. For this tier list, I decided to categorize them by how easy are they to play and build. Like take someone like Korra. She is admittedly a lot of fun and she's very strong, but building her is hard and it takes time, so she doesn't really qualify. They should be easy to play, easy to build, and you should be able to use them in the silk path and the circuit. Also, how good are they in every situation? If you can only use them for killing stuff, then sure they're good, but this game needs more than that. This tier list is more for how good a frame is in general, and are they good for casual players as well. Also, disclaimer, this is my opinion. Yours may be different, it probably is, but this is what I think. Feel free to share your opinion in the comments, as long as you're not being a dick. So first we have some honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is Garuda. Garuda is probably one of the best frames in the game when it comes to resource economy, since she can restore her own health and energy. Plus with the changes that she got, she can also become invulnerable, which makes her even easier to play and build. She's also one of those frames that easily scale into endgame thanks to her slash procs and the damage on her 1. She's just a very self-sufficient frame, so she's honorable mention number 1. The second honorable mention is Citrine. She's a pretty new frame, to be honest, but damn, she's like one of the best supports. I mean, there are only two good supports, but still. The amount of utility that she has stuffed into her, coupled with the damage buff that she gives everyone, is just amazing. Her second ability literally gives everyone Gera's DR and a fucking heal on top. She was a pretty close contender here, but she is a bit harder to play, which is why she isn't on the list, but she is still an insane support. Now we're getting into the list itself, and we're gonna start with... Zephyr is like the most hidden OP frame in this fucking game. I think that most people just don't really get how she works, or they just think that she's the same piece of garbage that she was before her rework. This frame is actually one of the best frames in the game when it comes to AoE damage thanks to her ult and second ability. Plus, her 3 gives her survivability, so she scales into endgame super hard. Her only annoying part is her passive because it makes her a bit hard to control, but you can get used to it, it's not like your rally level of annoying. Admittedly, her 1 is shit, it's really bad, but you can just replace it with Breach Surge and just, just look at that, holy shit. The only reason that this guy is not number 10 is because I had to update my builds recently and I had to farm stuff for the subsume, so... This guy only has one job, getting you the fucking loot. That's the only reason that you use him, but he's just so fucking good at it. Plus the fact that loot is so important in this game, which bumps him up every time. And now he even has armor strip on his second ability, which means that only his one is useless, but you can just subsume that out, and you're left with a frame that can even farm in the steel path, which is what you want to do because the steel path has a resource boost. This guy will always remain a stable for resource farming, and that's why he's number 9. This frame is just complete fucking bullshit. Her ult just makes everybody moves fucking slow. Everybody moves really fucking slow. Which is essentially just playing the game on easy mode. The amount of damage that she can deal with the debuff on the enemy plus her second ability is just fucking insane. You can just change up her build a little bit and turn her from slow nova to speed nova, which now has a completely different purpose in order to rush missions so you can farm relics or level your weapons even faster. This frame is fucking insane, she just breaks the game. Octavia is a bit weird because she's actually one of the best frames in terms of DPS. Like, seriously, this frame is fucking broken. The only problem with her and why she's so low on the list is because she's just so goddamn boring. Everything in her kit is a deployable, so there is nothing that you actively need to do when you play her. You just stand there and wait for shit to happen. You're like a child in a supermarket. She's probably one of the most unique frames in the games because she can make music with her passive. Until you get fucking tired from it since you suck at making an actual rhythm. support on the way. She's a really good frame and she's so fucking strong. She's just annoying as shit to play so no one does. I have not moved from this spot for two minutes. 
This frame was always one of my favorites, and somehow she still holds up until now. There is no other frame in the game who can just straight up cock block enemies like Gara. Yeah, Frost can fucking suck it, I don't care who cares about him anymore. And it's not like she can only tank and defend. This is Warframe, so naturally she deals a metric fuck ton of damage just by existing near enemies once you get your stacks. Which by the way, they stack, well, technically, infinitely. Plus with the DR that she has, this frame will never fucking die and she will still one-shot level 180 enemy just by existing. <laughs> This frame makes me feel sorry for anyone who likes Bobbin, because she just took everything that the guy wants to do and did it way better. She has insane DPS, but at the same time, her 3 and her 1 make her a good support. What's good about her is that she can just choose one spot and put all of her shit on that place, and suddenly no enemy can ever set foot on that spot, which somehow makes her really good for defense missions actually. She does have one issue, which is her ult, because it just sucks shit. But she has so many options to put there instead, like Larva, Nourish, and Gloom. And just like Saren, she has a very flexible build, so she can fit whatever playstyle you have. This is the reason that Citrine didn't make it onto the list. Wisp is just a fucking cheat code. You know how in the old days you had like cheats on a video game? Like have more ammo, have infinite HP, have infinite move speed. Well, Wisp is basically the manifestation of that idea because this frame buffs every single fucking thing that there is to buff in this game. Plus, she has an insane ability with her 3 that just allows you to double up your damage. And she has invisibility in her... I don't get why she has invisibility, but she has invisibility. It's it's just so fucking ridiculous how much like you can't kill this frame and she makes her entire team unkillable. You son of a bitch. Originally Revenant was actually pretty shit. His whole kit was kind of a mess because he was never really fully committed into doing one thing. Was he a tank, a crowd control, or a DPS? But then they changed him around and instead of not really committing to one thing, he became committed to every single fucking one of them. Admittedly, he's mostly used as a tank nowadays, since he's basically the better version of Rhino. Like you can just take Rhino's 4 and subsume it on his 4, so now you just get a better Rhino. You can use this guy in Archon Hunts and whatever boss fight that you need to fight because because he's just so fucking good at tanking. I mean, also his E is just so much fucking fun to use. It's like someone lit a rocket up your ass so you just zoom all over the map. Pretty good frame, I'm not gonna lie, I really like him. Do I even need to say why she's here? Her scaling is fucking amazing, and it's in her kit. You don't need to add anything to the sport for them to scale. You are basically shooting yourself in the foot for not having a built Saren on your account. She is the best frame for focus farming in ESO, which instantly makes her a must have frame. Like her kit is just so well put together that everything works with each other, but you can still add subsumes and different mods to create builds that suit you. There is no other frame in this game that can apply dots on such a large area, while also not dying at the same time. It's just insane how much you can get out of this frame by such minimal effort. Okay, I might be biased because she's one of my favorite frames, but come on now, you knew this was coming. For some reason, every time an update was released, Mesa got even stronger. Like, when Subsume were released, pillaging Mesa became the standard. In Veilbreaker, she got Archon Shards that directly buffed her regulators, and now in the current update, she can shred armor by just pressing her forward. Honestly, she's just a DPS, but she does that job so well that there's almost no place in this game that she can't be used. What makes her so strong is that her 4 is the perfect vehicle for applying stuff on the enemy. Like just take her to the circuit and get every status degree that you can and she just starts one-shotting level 700 enemies. Her kit is so simple but somehow it always adapts to the meta so she will always be one of the best frames to invest in. So yeah this is my list of the best frames in 2024. These are basically just the frames that you use if you're a casual player and you don't really have that much time to invest into getting insane builds. Like these are the most worth it warframes in the game right now.